So what is magic? I've been, I've been fascinated with magic my entire life. I was one of those kids that had a little magic kit. And I, was just, I, was so, I mean, who isn't fascinated by magic? But I always took it to the extreme and had to become a magi magician, you know, <laughs> as a kid. And magic to me was just mind-blowing because, you know, to me, the definition of magic would be anything that happens that your mind goes, there's just no way. There's just no way. That guy did not just push a cigarette through a quarter because I know that a quarter is solid and that a cigarette isn't sharp enough to go through a quarter. Now I know that there are things that can go through a quarter. You put a drill bit on the end of a drill and drill through a quarter, that's not that amazing. I would expect the drill bit to go through the quarter. <laughs> There'd be nothing magical about that. But when someone takes a cigarette and they push it through a quarter, you're going, what did I, what did I just see? And when the mind is blown like that, that in that space, in that moment, it is magic. And, you know, I got older, I had a friend that was a true magician. And he had this one card trick he would do. Where, and the process was something to the effect of, you know, pick your card, through the deck. And he'd take the whole deck and he would throw it up in the air and smash the whole deck against the ceiling. And the deck would go everywhere. The dram dramatic effect, you know. And there'd be one card stuck to the ceiling. One card! Well, first off, even if he wasn't doing a magic trick, how the hell did he make, out of 52 cards, one stick to the ceiling? How, that in itself was a cool trick. But for that one card to turn out to be my card, that was magic. And when he told me how he did the trick, it ruined it. <laughs> and I learned that so often in life, we find out the trick behind the magic just to have your brain complete the steps and go, oh. and it was simple, it was easy. It's like, oh, how did I not see that? And once you've seen enough magic tricks or at least known enough secrets, magic becomes unmagical and that kind of ruins life. Um, because that's what makes magic so neat, is the fact that our minds are blown. And I choose to not know how tricks are done now. I choose to be blown, have my mind blown because that is funner than knowing how the trick is done. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, I love magic. Video, video editing is magical. You can do things with video editing that I, you know, until you start thinking about it, it's, it's almost limitless what we can do with video. I mean, it's amazing how we can bring a person in and have them fly through the air and it looks so real. And, you know, and then once you've seen how, they, that, how that's done, it kind of ruins the shot, you know? I, you know, reality TV, reality TV is ruined for me because I know how it's done. And when I see a cop dive over a, a thing, a hedge of bushes, and then they've got four different cam camera angles of him landing, I know that that's not a live shot. I know that that wasn't a real shot. I know they had to go back and retake that shot multiple times to get that effect because if they hadn't, there would have been a camera in scene on some of those. You would have seen the camera. You know, I can stand there and I can hold the camera and I can spin around and you guys can see me hold the camera and then I can cut to another shot of me spinning around in a circle like this with nothing in my hand and then cut back to a scene of me spinning around in a circle again with the, you know, of, you know. If you cut that together, if you time it just right, and you know how to do the editing, you just, it's seamless. You can't tell where one ends and the other one begins. And in that, the mind is tricked into believing that you're seeing me one time spin around in a circle holding a camera, but in some of the shots, there's no camera in my hand. That's magic. How am I doing it without a camera in my hand? It's, you do the same exact thing twice, cut it together, and it's, it's magical. Because the only way you could get a shot like that would be with two cameras, and the second camera would show the first camera in my hand. So I'd either have to hide the camera in my hand or using two cameras, or it would be a real first take. And when you realize that things aren't a first take, it, it doesn't make them real anymore. That's one of the things I, I like about my channel is I, I, I run on a repo, it's a first take. It freaking, I got flaws in it, it's got flaws in it. That's, you know, I don't, I don't stage and reset up repos and, and have people reenact and, you know, they're real, it's really happening. That what was said was said, what was done was done. And I have to deal with the bloopers or the uh, inconsistencies or whatever in, in editing. You know, there's so, so much you can do in editing, but the really true magical stuff that, that professional video editors do, it uh, <laughs> that comes from just multiple takes of the same thing. Matter of fact, I started changing the way I do things while I'm videoing to help me fix that in post production. So that it was a real first take, but I can make it a little bit more professional. Like if I'm doing strapping the straps down and I mess something up, I'll stop, 
fix what was going to happen, and then go back to redoing it. It's still, a, it's not a first take anymore, but I'm still really there in the moment, really dealing with it. That way, if the person is going to come out in five minutes and say something or do something, that's all real. That's really going to happen. But in the moment, I can fix little things like that on the fly to help me in, in post-production to uh, uh, just make it a little bit better for you guys, I guess, so to speak. And if someone was to sit there and actually have a camera on me 24-7 that was never cut or edited, you'd see all those things. They call them outtakes in, in the real world and I, in the video world. And I sometimes will drop those into my videos to show you guys, you know, that just recently I had one where I ended the video with the beginning of the video, the first couple seconds where I was getting ready to start filming and I started walking and I tripped over something and I was like, ah, oh, let's do a retake on that. You know, and I stepped back and I showed you guys, that stuff really happens. But everything that I show you guys here on the channel is a first take. Sometimes a mistake, but always a first take. Meaning the situation is a first take. Might be my third time filming it. No, actually, I don't think I've ever gone back three times. Yeah, I usually, if I can't do it the second time, I usually just scrap it and go on to a different thought. <laughs> That's how I am. <sighs> so yeah, I'm gonna wrap tomorrow. This is Sunday evening. I'm really hoping I get the ninja back tomorrow. <laughs> really hope I can get it back tomorrow. Got a backlog of work. Believe it or not, I got a backlog of repos. And I could go out and get a borrow a buddy's truck or have someone come help me and I do all that shit, but I'm hoping that I get the truck back tomorrow and I can go do it myself. We'll get some repos on video for you guys and for the people that can't stand this car audio stuff, we'll get life back to normal for you. But I'm gonna finish this last final piece, the passenger front panel today and then uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll put these things on the truck. It's like these being made out of metal and then they're just sticking to the front of the panel magically. People will be like, how did you do that? That is incredible. Well, once you know there's magnets back there, it's not so incredible. You know, Chris Angel hovering off the ground is incredible. But then you find out that he's got a 8,000 pound magnet in the ground and magnetic boots on. It's not so incredible anymore, is it? Did I ruin that for you guys? Sorry. Chris Angel can really fly and doesn't do drugs. That's just so cool. Yeah, sometimes in life we just need to not know how the trick is done, just accept that it is magical. This is a this is a big car audio project per se. It's not compared to the ones I've done in the past, but it is a um, big one for. You know, someone who's not in it professional anymore, but doing this kind of work and stuff, I'm learning new processes to uh, end up with an end result that I'm happy with, that over the course of time is going to be able to stand up to, you know, vibration and wear and tear. And a lot of those show vehicles that we put sound systems in don't even get driven. The reason they don't get driven is because most of what is on display in there would break, crack, and fall apart if the vehicle was actually driven down a real road. You know, I know guys that have put fish tanks <laughs> in vehicles before. Yeah, it's a cool wow effect, but the sloshing effect alone would kill the fish, not to mention the mess it could make if it uh, cracked and broke open. I designed, designed this final trim piece to go on. See, the nice thing about the magnets is you can slide it around and adjust it in real time, whereas if you put some kind of a fixed piece on, it has to snap in perfect every time and getting that to line up is difficult. Those will glow at night when I have the lights on. I've thought about putting a light inside this down here, but it's just too much. I mean, that alone is too much if you ask me, but 
it's an effect that's cool. I was going to have it be just the tweeter, and then I ended up doing both speakers. It's going good though, it's all done. So now the material that I have on hand that I ended up not using in this project, it's a fiberglass based drywall joint tape. It's easy to use, goes around corners real easy. It's good for seaming things together in a project. You can just go right along an edge, put it like that. Gives you a nice rounded contour to start with and then your material can adhere to it and bond to it but we're not doing fiberglass on this project, so different material, different project. You know, so much of what we do in car audio is in the lines of magic. When people, especially the judges in a competition, look at your finished product, not only do you want it to sound awesome, obviously, but you also want it to have a look and appeal that I mean, you got to remember the judges, especially the, they've been doing this for years, been there, done that. They've seen it all. So when you have the wow factor, you're causing them to see something that they're going, okay, well, I know that that's next to impossible. How did he do it? It'd be like the triple jump in ice skating. You know, they throw that in there one time. The first person that threw it into their freaking skit three times, they got the gold. It's it's because the, 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 the risk goes up, but so does the reward. You know, the guy swinging for home runs is going to have the number one strikeout record because he's swinging for the fence every time. Babe Ruth had the, the highest strikeout average. A lot of people don't remember that. They just remember that he had the home run hitting, you know, record. So the best, the people who are the, the best at something are also usually the worst at something. Uh, it's just, that's how, the, that's how the extremes go in life. You seem to find that to be the case. Looking good. Yeah, we hide a lot of things in car audio. A lot of things that you'd call mistakes or whatever. We have these little tricks that we use to kind of trim things out and give them a final finish look. And finishing work is one of the key things of being good at this, knowing those tricks. Got the uh, call from Rocky Mountain Wrecker. The uh, ninja's ready, so we're gonna head up there and pick it up, and then uh, tow this vehicle over to the auction. <sighs> Get back to work. I've got one, two, three. The open ones right now. I've got to go run. I'm gonna hit uh, at least one or two of them on the way back south. It sucks because this is right at rush hour. And not much I can do about that, but <laughs> I'm going up there. Get the truck. Excited. Been waiting and waiting almost a month now. We are here. I don't see her outside, so they must just be wrapping it up. Let's go check it out. All right, we had a repossession. Come over here in uh, Springville, our hometown. Nice close one. Has a uh, GPS tracking device on it. Got some heavy lunch hour traffic right now. Brought to you by a mouthful of candy. <laughs> mm. Note yourself. Don't start videoing when you got a mouthful of candy. Hard to talk. So yeah, we're looking for a red 2009 Honda Accord. It's uh, supposed to uh, be actually living here in Springville, but we pinged it. Came back to a gym down in Spanish Fork the first time. And then 
this, this address right here. Second time. Just got the uh, Ninja back yesterday. Not too crazy about the paint job, but it'll grow on me. It's a high gloss black. The front of the truck is all faded, so looks like shit. I need to take it into my buddy that does the uh, detailing. How he can polish it out. See if I can get the front of the truck looking as good as the back now. There's nobody in it. This is a small dealership that we've never gotten business from before, so this is technically a new client repo. First one, one's the most important one. I always say that and then tell you that they're all important, but first one's our show me's. Show them that you're able to get the work done quickly and efficiently and hopefully without incident. Let's see if it's got the e-brake on or not, because style of car it is could be a stick looks like it's rolling free no contact Can't see anybody coming out I'm gonna pull over up here just a little ways about two football fields. It's enough distance for me to be able to spot someone. I mean, from that distance, I can tell whether they're uh, hostile, aggressive, you know, which there's a difference. <laughs> hostile has more of a, I don't know, I'm going to kick your ass look on their face and they have, you know, you got the agitated, you know, people can be agitated. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with being agitated. It's understandable. But uh, certain guys get this look on their face where you know when they approach, there's not going to be many words, but there are going to be fists. And you got to be ready for those. See, I started to put the door panels back on the truck. Still not 100% sold on the uh, design. Uh, it's an automatic, e brake is off. I got the sticker kits coming for both sides. Should be done hopefully later today. Tow light should be over on the other side. Charged up. Plugged those in last night. See, I got cheese from the Taco Bell on the steering wheel. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh yeah. Mouthful of candy again. I got the cheese. Goes on the boom. I gotta pull the uh, winch cable out. Put that in and then feed it through. Coming right up there. Be able to start using our winch for uh, recoveries and good grief. Got those backwards.
They were supposed to do the diamond plating in black. They didn't. Now the reason I'm pissed. But they got all the rhino lining done. Got the bed somewhat looking new. I wish I had the money to buy a new set of in the ditch dollies. Make the truck look good. Maybe I should contact in the ditch. See if they'll uh, send me a promotion pair. Of course, it's not like they need their product promoted. Toolboxes look like they've been tossed by a prison guard crew. Oh man, look at that shit. You busted up my freaking reverse light. Did a I even bent up my license plate too. Ah, freaking paint guys. Yeah, they didn't even put the freaking a new rubber ring on. Probably the one from the accident. Yeah, there's gonna be some complaining going on. You know, I'm not one of those guys that goes to a restaurant and gets a hair in his food and expects a free meal, but I will point out the hair. I'm not gonna push the issue, but you know, things aren't done right. You don't say anything, you're not gonna help them any to improve their process. So it's really about your come from. You know, you come in ranting and raving, yeah, you probably get your second order of food spit in, but you know, if you're like, yeah, I just think this is something that should be pointed out because this doesn't look professional, say it the right way. Kind of figured it'd be all locked up. Nice looking car. I need a couple of uh, dolly tires too. Sheesh. I get the Ninja back in service. Yeah, I'm not sold on them yet. I'm gonna probably make uh, some adjustments. I had to change some stuff at the last minute. The pattern and stuff, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just gonna leave them alone and get the other door done when I get back to the house. And I think I'm just gonna get them both on. So I can at least have music. And then uh, just sit for a minute and see what's what. Be a patient man. The best option will come to me. It always does. Oh, oh yeah. There's a repo for you. Same as the last 10,000 you guys have seen me do. Plus or minus few steps <laughs> I know I make it look way too easy on this channel dynamics of what's going on and what can happen at any moment always looming there's a lot that we can do as professionally trained certified recovery agents to uh, avoid horrible pitfalls there's a lot we can do to freaking make them happen <laughs> I know guys that push the issue create drama and uh, they don't get to bitch about why they're getting so much drama in their lives when you're accountable you know that everything happening is by design yippee ki mother